if I go see some of it. Yeah, I only went to see some of the first time the other day, about two or three weeks ago. Like, sea swimming in Ireland, like. Look, I go swimming in the sea, but not when it's cold. Nature is crack cocaine. <laughs> This is a celebration, this one. Episode 50. <laughs> oh, gee, yeah, Jesus, Episode yeah. 50. I get the big 5 0. The big 5 0. Um, today I have um, Dave Fogarty with us. How's it going? AKA Ginger. Ginger Beard. Yeah, Ginger Beard photos. I, I came across a few photographs, Dave Fogarty. You know, you had oh, the old watermark that, on the that's bottom. That's old school. If yeah. you had one of those, you're, you're an OG. If you yeah. had the Dave Fogarty, Dave Fogarty photography watermark, that's an OG. Yeah. I've I've seen a few of them from the jiu-jitsu. Uh, yeah. Kieran Brown shared one. Then. I used to just plaster them across the thing so people wouldn't steal them. And the people did anyway, so I just gave up. <laughs> yeah, wow. So Dave is a blue belt MMA fighter. Yeah. Entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Photographer. Yeah. And Conor McGregor's personal photographer. Yeah. Um, and we're going to go back to the very start. We're going to talk about jiu-jitsu. Nice. Um, photography. Yeah. Um, so you you went to school in. I went to school. I went to the, uh, secondary school. I went to school in town in uh, CUS. Okay. Yeah, private school educated. Yeah. So a uh, very big disappointment to me, man. That <laughs> I'm an artist. Right. So I uh, um yeah I, I went I went to school school in town. I think it was just, it was just easier for them because they uh they worked in town. Okay. So trying to like. You know, I lived in Curra House in the middle of nowhere. Just trying to get me to any school was annoying, so it was just easier to drag me up at six o'clock in the morning and drag me into school with them. Yeah. So that's why I went to school, dragged my way six years through to uh, to CRS, hated every second of it. Yeah. But I uh, made it out the other end anyway. I went to the institute beside it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Went to the institute yeah. beside it, so. Good school, that is. Yeah, no, yeah it's it was good. It was, it was, uh, Wasted on me. <laughs> yeah, <it laughs> well, was. like apparently some people done really well. It was. It was well, no, no. I did all right in my leaving, sir. Yeah. I got like four hundred, which is like you know, it was okay. Really? Like yeah. So I, uh, yeah, education was always important in uh, to my mom and dad. Yeah. Like I think they realised early on, like I just wasn't cut out to be a tradesman. I'm yeah. a measure once, cut twice kind of guy. <laughs> so um, they they just they just knew like I knew it as well. I was like fucking. I wasn't just I just wasn't cut out for fucking for uh, for working the building sites. My mates used to always say I'd be laughed off the sites because I had no idea, like you know, very unhandy. Just what just wasn't for me. So they were, like it was always an option. My mum and dad would, would let me do whatever I wanted. Like yeah, yeah. if you wanted to be a carpenter, they'd like go be a carpenter, do whatever yeah. you want. But they were like, if you're gonna go to school, to so, like you know you have to go to college. Yeah. So that was like you know very formal upbringing. Like you know you go to college, you go to school, you go to college. So I went to school. Got, got like 400 in my leaving cert so I was like right I'll, I'll just go to college now because um, you know, that's what I was told to do so I went to I went to DCU okay. and I did uh, communications because like communications is like an art, kind of like an arts degree it's kind of like when you don't really know what you want to do, <laughs> but it, I do yeah, yeah it's just like your man and dad told you to go to college and you don't really know what to do so you go you go do communications so you do photography videography and radio production and I just like photography the best so I uh, so I graduated, got a uh, I did all right. I, did, I got a, I got a two one. So I uh, so graduated and then I was like, many years was that? Three years. Three years, yeah. Oh, fuck. So I was like, what the fuck do I do now? Like you know, yeah. I wish if I could go back and if I could tell anyone like if, if people are watching this and like doing the leaving sir, I always think like going to college is important if you if you're not if you don't want to be like if you want to be a tradesman go be a fucking yeah. tradesman. But if you yeah. don't, I think going to college is actually important. Yeah. Just because like I didn't use anything for my degree, but it, like. You know, you kind of grow up a bit doing it. Like you know, everything falls on you. You have to do everything yourself, and it's just. I thought. I thought. I think it's important to do it. But I will say, is know what you want to do at the end of it. Because I came out of college and I didn't know what the fuck to do. Like, yeah. I was like, what am I gonna do now? Finish head communications. I was like, what does that like? What, what does that get me like? Yeah. I wish I had done a course that I uh, had a definite job at the end. You know, like an engineer came out and you're an engineer. You mm. do accountancy. You're an accountant. Yeah. So I came out and I I didn't know what I was gonna do. It was right in the middle of the recession, so I was just like doing what everyone else is doing. I was like, right, well, I'm gonna go to Australia. Yeah. So went to Australia. I lived there for for like a year and a bit. 
and then I, uh, I was selling. I was selling. Um, I was gonna say, I was selling insurance for a bank over the phone, and it was shit. Hated it. <laughs> now I paid great money. It was <laughs> right great right. money, but I fucking just hated it. What Good. bank was it? Bank of Australia. Oh, I can't even remember what it was. It was. I can't even remember. Jeez, I can't even remember now. It's been and so was long. was in Sydney? No, I was in Melbourne. Oh, right, I was right. in Melbourne. But we're calling all over Australia. I just get abused on the phone by Australians. Because, like, <laughs> it's like when the bank calls you here. Because it wasn't, like, it wasn't really the bank. It was, like, the bank's insurer. It was just, it was basically a scam, like, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. I'd look at this and go, like, there's no way these will ever pay money out for anything. And I felt, like, bad scamming people out of their money base. Like, it was all legit. It was a real job and everything. Yeah, yeah. But it was just, like, any shit in... In life Sell insurance. insurance that they don't need. Yeah, that they don't need that they will never pay out. Like, yeah. so I ended up coming home then, and then I didn't know what to do, and I had always enjoyed taking pictures. So I was like, you know, I'm just gonna go back, go back and just do photography. I was like, still young enough, had a bit of savings from, from working in Australia. So I was like, I'm just gonna go, try my hand at this, and that's what I did. I just went to Griffith College then and did another three years there, in photography. And I wish I'd just done that to start. Yeah. which I just came out of school and I suppose like I needed to to grow up and I needed to like you know yeah. find myself as they say but yeah, uh, but yeah. Th- that's what one made me like I always like looking if you look at this podcast or yeah. a lot of views on it are alternative yeah. you know what I mean yeah. that's not because who you take photographs for it's like the arts as you said yeah like, yeah, like everyone thinks when are you going to get a real job yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. a photographer yeah and what else do you do yeah you know so it's it's that's what drew me to get you on the podcast yeah, it is one of those mean. it's one of those jobs that like it's very very difficult to make a living doing yes. it full time like very very mm. difficult and it's also an unprotective term like you know you have a phone and you're like a camera phone now everyone's a photographer yeah, everyone yeah. takes pictures so it's kind of one of those ones that it's like it it, it like you don't need to go to college to do it. Like there's yeah. some some of the best photographers in the world are self taught, yeah. but I just wanted I wanted to go because I was like I wanted to get like a f- almost like do my apprenticeship in it. Like like I was saying, wasn't cut out for the wasn't cut out for for the sites. But I was like I, I wanted to do do my time and do it properly because that's just the way I wanted to do it. Yeah. Like people can go about it any way. Like you know, like I said, some of the best ones have never spent a day in college in their life. But that's just what I wanted to do was. Like, you know, dip my toe in, in different things and, and see, like, do do I like doing product photography? Like, one thing I wish I did more in college was, ex- like, do more different things. Like, when I look back now and I think, oh, I had all that free studio space, like, free rental to gear. I'd accessed all these mad, like, large format film f- photos that I wish that I could do now. But now I look at them and I was like, she's had to pay for that and it's mad money. <laughs> so I wish I'd done more of that in college. It's just, like, enjoyed my time because I kind of wanted to rush through it and like you know make money like because I just like, like like most people I was just geared to oh, I need to make money I need to make money yeah. so I wish I just enjoyed my time in college a little bit more and experimented more and like you know use use the facilities because Griffith College is an, for photography is an amazing photography course like they're really really good and they have great facilities and I wish I just kind of used them a bit more because yeah. I was just so focused on I could do this and train at the same time. So, yeah, yeah, so yeah. That was that was where my mind was at. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, I could definitely do this and train, train jujitsu and train MMA yeah. at the same time. So I kind of I got a bit distracted. Yeah, no, I I used to see you floating around them early jujitsu competitions, yeah. taking photographs, yeah. and then I used to see you and McGatton floating around yeah. at the early Bahamas and yeah, yeah, they, them, them shows and Andy's battle zone. And, yeah, that was kind of like the heyday of yeah. of Irish MMA. Yeah. yeah, me and me and Andy Mac, they were good times. Me mm. and Andrew, me and Andy McGatton had some great times with yeah. that. We used to go around to like every single MMA MMA show, and that was again. I was looking at that as that was part of my apprenticeship. Like, is yeah. is when I when I came out of college and they were still doing it in college I was like alright I seen a little niche I was like no one was kind of really doing it and I was like like it was before it was before kind of blew up like you know yeah, we didn't yeah. really have an MMA no. and MMA started to go oh that's what I wanted to take no, no. and the idea of being a personal photographer yeah. like hadn't even I didn't think like even rappers or no one had a personal photographer back then Instagram was only really starting to kick off yeah. we were just doing like I supposed my photos on Facebook that, that was the big one so we had worked for Severe MMA, so we used to just go around to that. Like, I'd say there was a good two-year period where me and Andy did miss one MMA show. Like, yeah. we'd go up north, we'd go to Cork, we'd go to all of them. Like yeah. We'd go everywhere. He'd do the interviews, I'd record them. We'd record the fights, and I'd take photos. So it's kind of like, 
that's kind of where I was learning to learning learning my trade and learning what I like this trying to find my style and like learning what I like to do and I kind of like after about a year of it probably no longer than a year probably after about two years I realized that I kind of much prefer doing the background stuff doing like when their fighters were getting ready and when they were getting their hands wrapped and doing the behind the scenes yeah. stuff much more than I enjoyed doing the actual fights like I, I liked doing the fights and it was cool when you get that perfect head kick knockout like but I much preferred trying to do kind of get a more emotional sense from from MMA and so that's when I decided I was like I'll do that's what I decided to do my pro- my final year project on and I didn't I don't think there was any photos of actual fighting in the in because we had to make a book so I don't think there was actually any more any actual fighting in the book I was like I'm just going to do all this behind the scenes and trying to find an emotional sense of MMA and try and show normal people what MMA is because at the time when I tell people I do MMA or I take photos of MMA I'd be like oh is that like the is that like the WWE <laughs> and it's like yeah kind of like this is when like it was probably was still on yeah. probably had just finished on remember it used to be on Bravo yes so it probably had just finished up on Bravo it was probably coming into a bit more into the mainstream mm. about halfway through Connor had gotten signed then and then once Connor got signed obviously MMA blew up everybody knew what it was I didn't have to explain what it was anymore yeah but um yeah it was good times me and Andrew were having a good times so. there yeah. yeah and then how were your parents like when you were going down this photography route how supportive yeah. were your parents obviously they were supportive yeah yeah, yeah. You know, like. um yeah my mum and dad are, uh, especially my mum my mum is my, my, my biggest fan like you know she and same with my dad but he was like you know a bit more like you know look you're gonna have to start you just thinking more about how to make money but not even how to make money just how to like make it into a business yeah but my mom when my mom was they were just happy that like i was happy yeah. so, you know that like they were very very much like if that's what you want to do do it like you know if you if that if that's what you want to do they like just go do it like but don't half arse doing it mm. like if you're going to do something you have to do it like yeah. you know so they really instilled in me that like that you make anything your job but you can't half arse anything like if you're going to do it you have to you have to do it so like they'd help me you know, they'd help me out with giving me a loan of money to buy, to buy, like, they gave me a loan of money to buy my first, my first camera. Like, they, they, like, they helped me get into, get into Griffith, like, you know, because Griffith was a private college. Yeah. So they paid the first year tuition, like, so, so they, they really helped me. If it wasn't, wasn't for them, I'd be, no, like, I wouldn't, I'd probably be working for Irish Ferry. Yeah, yeah. So I, um, because as I got, the, as I got accepted to Griffith College, I accepted the offer to Griffith College. And as I put down the phone, I got a phone call straight after from Irish Ferries saying that, like, because I, I'd applied for a job with this agency and they said that I had it. And I was just so excited at the fact that I'd gotten into college. I was like, oh, no, no, I don't want it. Like, <laughs> so if it was the other way around, I would have accepted the job and I would have yeah. just gone back working. Yeah. So it kind of all worked out. But yeah, they were always super supportive. They, they like, they love, they love obviously where, where I've gotten now. They love seeing, seeing my pictures. Like, they have, they, they've printed my photographs. They, they love it. Like, my, yeah. my mom is the first one that, like, on Instagram she follows me Connor the Mac life and my girlfriend and that's it like so she loves seeing my pictures she'll be the first one she like she doesn't quite understand Instagram but she'll she send me she's proper gangster yeah. follow, follow <laughs> she, she'll, she'll like send me DMs <laughs> or like she's like a oh, great photo yeah. or even if even if I didn't post it but Connor posted it like she'll know it's mine and she'll send it to me and all like so yeah, yeah. yeah no I love my mum and dad and like the, the support they showed me was great if it wasn't for them it was the same with my, my other my two brothers they did they have like normal jobs if you will and it was the same with them they were like you know super supportive like you know if that's what you want to do go and do it like but mm. yeah so sound Marion and Des if you're watching I'm sure you will watch Marion thanks and um, I suppose as a parent as well like really and most people are like that yeah the dad is kind of like yeah I need to see pounds and cents yeah. and the mother's a bit more oh he's happy and yeah, he's, yeah. you know and you need that kind of yin and yang you know yeah. what I mean of of but once your kids are happy, that's what it's all about. Yeah, that was always the you main know, thing for that's them. What it's about. Was like, because the start when I was working in Sphere MMA, they didn't make any money. Like, no, <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely lost money. Like, I nearly got 100. a coffee. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I'd be, the promoter bought me a coffee. Yeah, we'd be lucky if we get a, a water in the back. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. like so we were making no money, but they were they were just delighted that you know one that I was happy and two that I was working towards something. Yeah. You know, and then when and then obviously when Connor blew up they heard about what MMA was and they're like oh that's that thing that, that Dave takes photographs of and they knew what Jiu Jitsu was they knew I competed in it so yeah. kind of knew what martial arts was 
they were always just just happy that that I that I was I was happy and out of trouble and was like you know was putting my energy into something positive. Mm. So they were always always very supportive. Mm. And how you were you start training first of all jiu jitsu yeah. under Darren O'Connell. How did that come about? How did you, like this was before the photography, obviously. Yeah. So how did the jiu jitsu come on the radar from someone from Kuraha? Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's yeah, not it's, a str- like I know when you started, even when I started, it was like kind of hidden. Yeah, like, it wasn't the easiest thing to find, and even in between, because Dara's out in Monkstown, like, I'm I'm in me. There was a lot of jiu-jitsu clubs and MMA yeah. clubs in between. Yeah. So my mom and Dara's mom worked together in the ESB, and they were always good friends. Cause, okay. Because we'd always be getting in trouble together, like yeah, yeah. You know, not like we didn't know each other, but we he'd be getting in trouble in school, and I'd be getting in trouble in school, and they'd always be getting phone calls from me from our school. So like, I think they bonded over that. Yeah. So she used to always tell me that Belinda's son does. Ninjutsu, <laughs> and I was like, "What a fucking idiot!" Like, it's like it's way, what a waste of time. What's he doing that for? And she'd always tell me, "Like, oh, Belinda sons off in America doing ninjutsu," and I'd be like, "What an idiot!" And then they, um, she said to me one day, "Oh, Belinda's son got a, a got a bronze medal in the in the Pan Ams," and I was like, "What?" I was like, "Are you? I go, is it sure it's ninjutsu? It's not jujitsu." She's like, "Oh no, yeah, it's jujitsu." I was like, what? I was like, Belinda's son is a brown belt. Because at the time, there wasn't like, there was probably, I know Roddy hadn't gotten his brown belt. This is before I even tried with Roddy. So Roddy hadn't got his, his black belt. Like, I think John Kavanagh, Andy Ryan, there was a hand, a very small handful of black belts. So being a high level brown belt was huge at the time. Mm. So I heard that Belinda's son actually does jiu jitsu and is fairly good at it. So I, um, I was like, yeah, I'm definitely going down there. So I wanted to go down because I hadn't trained in the gi before. So I was like, I want to train in the gi. So I would make the the trip down to to Dara's. I could go. I could nearly go down every day or every second day at least. Go down and train with Dara, and then I just loved it. I just East Coast in in my opinion for as a pure jiu jitsu academy. I think it's the best jiu jitsu academy in 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 Ireland, if not one of the best jiu jitsu academies in the world. Like yeah. just the way the passion Dara has for teaching it. Like it's 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 the same when I look at like how Roddy teaches MMA. Mm. It's the same passion that Dara has, but he doesn't want to teach anything but jujitsu. Yeah, he just yeah. wants to do gi and no gi jujitsu. That's mm. it. And you can really tell how how passionate he is about it, and that comes across in his students and the way he teaches. So I loved it, and I just stayed stayed down there. I had been doing kickboxing at the time, and then I kind of had a fall out with my kickboxing instructor over training in Dara's because he was like, "Oh, you can't train there and train here." So I was like, "All right, well, see you later." So I stayed training there, and then. I still wanted to do MMA and still wanted to do kickboxing, so I found Roddy, and thankfully Roddy was a little bit closer. <laughs> so yeah. I um, started training with Roddy, and like we had just we just we kind of hit it off straight away. Like you know, Roddy's like like one of the nicest people in the whole world. Like he's just a gentleman. Yeah. And um, yeah, he's just a good laugh. Like, and I just clicked straight away with everyone down there, with all the lads and on, and I just found my home for MMA and striking down there, and kind of as it progressed, I'd. As a white belt through blue belt, I kind of would did did more jujitsu because Roddy was always like, "Oh, you should do MMA," and I was like, "I don't want to do MMA. Like, I just uh, I don't think I'm good enough. Like, I don't mm. want to get kicked in the leg. It looks super sore. Like, <laughs> and then the more the more I got trained, the more I got kicked in the leg. I was like, "Oh, it actually, isn't that bad?" So Roddy just said to me one day, he goes, "Um, there's there's the the IMAT are doing the European Championships. I was like, I'm not doing that because I'd never fought before." He goes, "You get to wear shin guards." I was like, you get to wear shin guards. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, and it's same day weigh-ins. Because I was always tiny. like yeah, for, yeah. I'd walk around at 57 kilos. Mm. So I was like, yeah, I'll do that. I was like, that, that's right up my street. So ended up doing that and ended up getting... Uh, uh, I got a bronze medal the first time I did it. So I got a bronze medal in that. And then I just, just never looked back. I just I competed competed ever since. I did another... Um, I did a world championship. I got a, I got a silver medal in. And then I did... Uh, a year, another Europeans and got a silver medal in that. So, and then I did as a white belt. I got a bronze medal in um, jiu jitsu uh, as a as a white belt. So I got my blue belt off Dara O'Connell. So that was ages ago now, Dara. So you know what's up? I oh, yeah. um, it's it's the very first. I remember there's a local newspaper around here. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, remember yeah. I opened it up one day and literally I think Connor, I think I went over. Like it was, it was real cloak and dagger stuff. Yeah. My kid was doing jiu jitsu. Max was doing jiu jitsu yeah. here up the road. But it just, he wanted to try MMA and do MMA yeah. stuff. And I was like googling, 
and I never came across Roddy's because it's only there. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I think the week I went to join Max into SPG headquarters, Connor had only come back a week from Sweden. Yeah. He was only back after yeah, the yeah. first MMA team. So it was, as you say, back in the day, it was real. Like, you had to go searching for it. You had to now know Now everyone's, someone. like, yeah, wannabe. Ev- yeah. Not wannabe, but Everybody, now it's so much... It yeah. was real cloak and dagger. You like. had to know somebody, is the yeah. way, like... Because now you like... It's like you, Fight Club. Yeah. <laughs> now you're Googling. You're like, okay, that's a good good mm. club. Or, or he's a brown belt under this guy. But, but like, kind of back in the day, you had to know somebody. Like, that was, yeah. that was how, like... You yeah. didn't. You, you joined a club by you knew mm. X, Y, and Z, and they trained here, so that's where you trained. Like mm. that's that that's that's really how it started, and mm. that's yeah. Like so, I just ended up in Roddy's, mm. and then I ended up like we ended up doing like working quite closely together, and, and we, obviously through my work with Connor, I spent a lot of time at Roddy, and so it just worked. It worked out perfectly. Like that, like mm. that's just how, how it worked out. But I I think for MMA, I think SPG Charlestown is one of the best MMA clubs in the country. Like the 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 team that Roddy has down down there like you know you got Ryan Curtis, um, even like Jer like Jung Jer Harris Harris so he's got like they're all gonna go mad fucking Ian all the lads Danny all the lads Scott down there they got such a good team of such a variant of weights mm-hmm. like I always joke and say that we're the team alpha male of Ireland like we have so many one thirty five one forty five and below Sm- loads of, small loads of smaller lads. lads so there's loads of lads are our own like my weight that we train with yeah. like loads of up and comers coming up to the gym I think Roddy's really found his feet now when it comes to coaching because he's really found a good coaching style that he can like he can relate because some people are excellent fighters but not great coaches mm. some people are great coaches not not great fighters and it takes like a certain balance of both to be a really really top top quality coach and it's I think that's what Roddy has he can like he he can find a way to to kind of give you the information in the way that you can take in. So the way that I take in information is different to the way that you t- take in information. But Roddy can kind of like tailor it so mm. everybody can get can get the most out of it, which I think is it's a, I think it's a talent as well. Like you know, not mm-hmm. everyone has it. And I think he's really really good at it. Like yeah, and you can see like he's enthusiastic. Max is loving it down yeah. there. Max is gonna fight at seventy kilos. Yeah, like even Max has has come on like so. It's, and he's he down there. The reason why we're down there is. Man, the striking, the yeah. fucking serious strikers. Every single yeah. person can strike. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and people look at it like different gyms of like surrogate gym. People look and go, oh, that's a wrestling gym. Or, you know, John's is kind of like more of a grappling gym. And then they say, like, oh, Roddy's is, is like a striking, striking gym. Hand. Both grapplers. But you look, at all, grapplers. you look at all, all of them, and like, you know, Sergey's got some great strikers. John mm-hmm. obviously has got, got yeah, great yeah. all around. It's great strikers, great yeah. jujitsu. But yeah. the same at Roddy's. Roddy is a black belt under John, very unorthodox style of of, of jiu jitsu. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's the same way with jiu jitsu. Like he's very passionate about it. Mm. He can impart the knowledge knowledge onto you. He's also not. He's also not afraid to like 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 make people like if you train in Roddy's and I went down and I was like I'm gonna train in Darius. Roddy would have no problem with it. Yeah, and Roddy yeah. would have no problem me coming back and saying, oh, well, Darius said. Dara showed me this like same with Max Max comes mm-hmm. up and shows us things and Roddy doesn't have an ego he no, goes, no, no, no 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 we do it my way yeah, yeah. like I'd, I you can He's come open. up and say oh Dara says that, that, that like oh we he showed it we do it this way and Roddy will take it on and go yeah that works that's better mm-hmm. like that's better than the way I I do it. but then it's the exact same way sometimes I'll be like oh Dara showed this and Roddy's like yeah but what if you put your hand here like this will work better for MMA or, or this will work so it's great having like I haven't been down in Dara's now in 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 a, in ages, but it's it's great having those those two people like mm. you know, to to learn off and bounce off, and so it's great. I think of the best of both worlds. Yeah, yeah. No, it's um, it is, and and <clears throat> oh yeah, as I said, I mean, so Max and he's he's not innocent, but yeah, he wouldn't be from. But the boys down there skill him. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's, oh, it's getting... like Fight Club. But what I mean is, with the bleeding court, ah, Jer, the slagging is yeah, fucking oh, amazing. It's oh, he's it's getting, amazing. He's getting much better. It's realness. So. There's some great, there's some great banter down in SGD yeah. Charles Town. There's, there's, now, Roddy, uh, that's what Roddy be looking given now. Less, <laughs> less, less talk and more working. But we get the work done. That's you got to yeah. find a balance. That's one of the great things. Like I haven't fought. I haven't fought now in, in a few years, like, but I still love going training because, mm-hmm. like, you know, you get you, you get the rounds in, you get to, you get to spar, you get great get great banter, like, so I, I love it. Now I do plan on going back, mm. back to fight at some point, but like even without the fight and like I don't need 
competition to drag me down. Yeah, yeah, there. yeah. I'll, I, I happily go down there. Because you like doing it. Yeah, I like doing mm-hmm. it. Like, and I can once everything opens up back back up and yeah. we can get back training down in, down in Dara's. Yeah. Like, I, I can't wait to get back down, put the gi back on, brush it off and uh, get back doing that. Like, so I'm really looking forward to kind of like the whole place opening back up again. Oh, Alex. Mm. Oh, there we go. That's what we get for fucking shine. There you go now. See yeah, that? Yeah. I would have been bleeding for sellotaping that and everything. <laughs> would have worked. But yeah, so I've just, I was just, just loving it. Like, you know, I love trying and love, love what I do. Mm. Yeah, so. Sort of sell tape, like. Sound good. And um, you're going to obviously you're going Connor's fight camp. You don't know dates or anything yet. Yeah, looking and, forward to that. Yeah, I'm, I'd say I'm, that's a whole new experience. Yeah, I'm looking for looking forward to to doing it. I've done a few a few of the camps with him, covered them. So looking forward to getting out and seeing seeing like you know being around him and getting a photograph and watches like you know watch the progression through through the camps is all is always great. So um yeah, really looking forward to it. Like you know, it's a oh, every fight's a big one for Connor. Like yeah. you know, people talk about all this pressure. He has, he has to do this and has to do that. Every every fight's a huge fight for Connor, and he takes every one of them the same way. Mm. So this is just it's just another another day in the office for Connor. So I'm looking forward to to seeing what what they this what they decide to change, what they keep the same, what looking how he goes in. Like I thought he looked great in the la- in the last fight. Yeah, no, looks savage. Obviously, it didn't go his way, but savage. I think there's a lot of positives to take from it and. You know, there's no no better man to to find a way to do it than than Conor. Like so, I'm really looking forward to it. It's MMA, shit happens. Yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. Shit happens. It's a game of millimeters. Yeah. Shit happens. You yeah. know what I mean? It does happen. So from from yachts, million dollar yeah. yachts to vans. Yeah, yeah. I fucking tell you, Dave. I tell you, this is great because I, I used to always see. When I'd be making money, I was like, I should sure just fucking. I was like, I should sure just kind of real job. Do you know what them? You no know color seats are. Great. Periwinkle blue. Periwinkle <laughs> <laughs> blue. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I think it is a big thing for, for people, if anyone, like, oh, oh, so if anyone is, does take anything from it, from, like, what I do, and is, it's just one, enjoy what you do, mm. but it's like, you know, I think a lot of people hide behind this, oh, you just have to be happy. You mm. do need a certain amount, like, there's things that you're going to have to... You, you need readies. You, yeah. You need happiness and yeah. readies, and yeah. that's the balance. Need, there's a balance, like, you know, you can have... Can be the happiest person in the world, but like you know, if it's you not going to pay a fucking mortgage. It's not going to pay a mortgage, <laughs> and like you know, as soon as you start marking up debt, you'll start becoming very unhappy. So money isn't the key to happiness, but it is unfortunately it's the world we live in. You need to have it. So I always would say to people to have a backup. Like you know, don't don't put everything. Like I was even saying to Max, I was like, you know, when you finish school, like he's skill wise and his drive and athleticism, everything. I was like, yeah, you could go. F- be a professional MMA fighter no problem but it's like you're so young mm. it's like you should like look at going to college mm-hmm. I was like you know have something because anything can happen to yeah, anyone yeah. leg you know, break leg you break, knee, your leg, knee break tear your ACLs yeah. even like you know with anything I crash and I break I break my hands I can't I can't be a photographer mm-hmm. anymore so mm-hmm. I always think that's important to have to have something to fall, to fall back on and to not just and not not because a lot of people now you know they look at like Oh, what like oh, it's a cool job, but yeah, it, like what I do is a f- it's a f- it's a very cool. And I, I love it and I, en- I really enjoy it. But you have to have a way of making money. You have yeah. to have a way of providing for it. Cause like I'm, thir- what, she's thirty one now, nearly thirty two. She's my girlfriend. <laughs> she she <laughs> definitely point out how old I am now. But like we have a mortgage together. Yeah. You know I have to pay I have to pay pay my share and when it comes down to having a having a really cool job or providing for my family, like I'm gonna provide for my family and I yeah. think that's like an important thing to don't get swept up and looking cool on the internet like yeah no no it's it's um a hundred percent I I say to Max all the time and I'd say to any influence out here like the most important expense not important expense but the largest expense you should have in your twenties is go to college a fucking phone. Yeah. That's it. Don't yeah. try and look fucking yeah, yeah. like you're balling it. 
and being broke yeah, trying yeah. to do it. You don't, know go what I mean? rich, don't go broke trying to look yeah. rich. And and tons of people out there doing it on the fucking internet and fair fuck to you, but just yeah. don't sign up to yeah. it because it's and, bollocks. And like you see people making all the money in crypto and all this, like there's all these mad ways to do it. Like yeah, so, yeah. nothing you have to do in any one way. Mm. But I just think that they, uh, that it is an important aspect and, aspect and fucking just growing up is when you realise, wait, like, you know, mm. I probably shouldn't buy does I'm like <laughs> having a me later, later on, but it, it's happening. Like I probably shouldn't buy these four hundred or eight hundred euro pair of runners. It's like I probably shouldn't. I probably should buy a water softener. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like that was when that came down to it. That was a big one. Like I probably should get a water softener, or like you know, I need money for for flooring. Yeah, yeah. Like that that that'll hit you. And it'll come up fast, and you don't want to be in your you don't want to be in your late twenties and fucking own your bollocks out because you have a you have a Montclair jacket. Like yeah, you know, it's a, so I just think it's it, it's important to fucking. To just stay stay grounded and to uh, to always ha- always have something to to fall back on and you know don't con- don't solely concentrate on just making money but it is something to it is important. I I like the thing that Peterson talks about the little circle and it's like yeah happiness yeah it's something that provides money for yeah. that happiness and a bit of balance. Fix the camera, can't see you. There we go. Oh, that's yeah. that's a supportive spouse. That's, that's, that's what you call it. Nice Super. Yeah. But that little kind of balance of yeah. you know, it's it's I I see people all the time going, I want to be an MMA fighter yeah. and I'm just geared and there's no yeah, that's the chances of like look at Connor, for yeah. instance, right? Nobody has done that. He's a unicorn. Nobody yeah. has even got close. And even any, like I'm, I'm looking at the moment in in Ireland, for instance. No one has even got close. There's a couple of guys coming up in and around, but I know the types of money that's being paid yeah, out at the moment. Yeah. yeah, I want to see them doing it. I hope they do it. Yeah, like I, but it's it's a wish, tough fucking gig. You wish the best on on everybody. Yeah, you want I want to see, see any see Irish bloke doing it, and I'll and I'll do well. Mm. But like I, I just think this kids coming out of school. And just dropping everything to to, ju- to just do it, I just think it's crazy. Mm. I just think like you know, like yeah, oh, Connor did it. Connor did do it, and mm. fucking did it better than anybody. He did it better than anybody else, and probably did it better than anyone else will ever do it. Yeah. But he's he's the outlier. He's the unicorn. Yeah, like, <laughs> he'll never be replicated. No. And no. so I just think keep keep it realistic. Mm. Keep like you know, there's so there's there's twenty four hours in a day. Like you mm. know, there's a there's so much time in a, in, in a day that you can train tr- you can train twice in a day and still go to college you can do stuff that benefits your training there's mm. so many great like you know PT courses you're mm. coming out with a qualification at the end there's so many great sports nutrition and like a lot of people you see a lot of fighters that start off being fighters and then they, they find something like oh I'm much more interested in actually making myself stronger and bigger and then they gravitate more towards that or towards the nutrition side mm-hmm. so like don't pigeonhole yourself Mm. Like same at every job, like you know, mm. don't mm. pigeon. Like you need, you need to be able, you need to be flexible and be able to to change. Go a bit jujitsu nerd now. Nah. What's your favorite submission? Flying triangle. No, flying triangle in MMA, and in jujitsu, it's a no hooks rear naked choke. And what's your favorite shot to catch court that way? Straight left, a straight right hand when he throws a double leg kick. <laughs> Always roll back in, into the back of his head. Just have to lay off because he's a family man now. You know, I don't want to do him damage. <laughs> the beard takes that. The takes beard, it well. The beard takes it. Yeah, I like. I go easy on him now. You know, he's just had, he's just had a daughter. You know, it's, want him to go home safe every night. So I just take it handy on him. You know, let let him get him. Let him get his get his licks in. You know. Mm-hmm. And um, favorite submission, guard puller wrestler I used to just go and jump on my bike I used to just go let people push me against the cage and fly and go for flying triangle that's like, that's all I used to do and now ever since I stopped fighting I've gotten much better my striking's much better my, my takedowns are much better now I much prefer being on top mm. like I much prefer being on top I much prefer takedowns holding top position so I would say I would say takedown mm. like a good good trip I love a good trip 
and um, <clears throat> do you do when you go away do you do any training or is it all I'd say it's all all in photography it's, or can you get a bit of training in it, it, it's, it's all in it's a, like it's, it is it's a long like people see it and think that's this glamorous yeah, yeah, thing yeah, and yeah. it's great and it's fucking I look, love my job yeah. but it is hard it's a long long days like you know a lot of editing so we do it twice so he trains twice a day I, I work twice work twice a day so then at the end of it every day so I got to go to sessions photograph sessions edit the sessions send it back everything up make sure everything's charred do that again for the next one back everything up again back it up twice make sure everything is, is done and that's that's all like every day yeah. but I do try and find a bit of time to a um, now I might get time to to train like as my hip pads with Roddy you know at the very odd time I might get to grapple with someone so I just recently I've, I've enjoyed doing weights in a do it with, with Connor's nutritionist Tristan Kennedy yeah. he, uh, he's he been helping me a lot so when I go away just just working on just lifting weights like because I used to like I didn't I didn't ever do weights weights I don't know why because I just didn't know what I was doing I didn't like going to the gym and some some fella telling me like you know who had no idea what he was talking about which is much better now. That like the P, like I was saying, those PT courses now, people are way more knowledgeable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before, some fella gave me mass gain and all this stupid stuff <laughs> and just doing crap. Yeah. But now Tristan has like when we go away, we'll we'll do a good weight weight session, try and get in once or twice a day, and um, yeah, no, enjoy enjoy doing that. Bit of yoga with Colin Bourne in the morning. Colin yeah, Bourne yeah, is, yeah. Colin, Colin Bourne, Bourne's coming on the podcast. He's Colin one Bourne serious is up, kill deal. He's up before I am. <laughs> So I'm not a, uh, I'm not doing yoga in the morning, yeah. but I, uh, yeah, no, he's up, he's up far too early for me. <laughs> late, late, late night editing is late night, <laughs> early morning. That's one great thing about about the job. There's no, there's no getting up early in the morning. Yeah, yeah. You very rarely do I have to get up early. So uh, Colin be up and doing doing his good mornings and everything long before I hit the cold side of the pillow. <laughs> Whopper. Whopper. Um. So that's really we'll wrap it up at that, yeah. Dave. Thank you so much no worries, for um, no worries, thank you so me. much for coming in. And as I'm always drawn to people in the arts and kind of yeah. the outliers, you know what I mean? That's yeah. that's I like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's, get someone on who's like an accountant. Yeah, I'm sure. telling you, balance, sure. balance it. I know. There's a fella that does all the editing for me and all. Connor Kinsley, shout out to him. D Tour Day Media. He's a photographer. Another buddy of mine is a photographer in London. He's doing great stuff. Um, Connor Clinch. Oh yeah, yeah, you know Connor Clinch. Yeah, Connor Clinch. Yeah, I know Connor Clinch. Yeah, 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 yeah. He is. He's unbelievable. Uh, he's worked under ranking and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know three photographers. Yeah, you, Connor's him, man. him, and Connor. Yeah, yeah. Now I, do, I look at I look at the other fella. I don't know him, but I know Connor. Connor's a man. Yeah. Connor is amazing. No, so he's, he's, he's he is. He's like world class. I was talking to him a while ago on Instagram. Now he's still in London. He's after getting mad into CrossFit. Yeah, and stuff yeah, over yeah. There. But the I next seen, time I seen he comes him home, the, I seen him putting the gloves on a few days yeah, ago. Yeah, no, he's, he's yeah, yeah. Connor took loads of photographs. When Max started off, Max was in loads of Connor's early stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah when he was like a boy. Con- and yeah, Connor's a man. I look, I look at his yeah. photographs and I'm like, I love to take he pictures done a, like that. He done a photo shoot, shoot with Barry Keoghan there. Yeah. I think Max was ten in it or something like that. But they're all like little townies yeah. with Max in there. Yeah. Mad little look, but um, That's great. he has his own like. You took a photograph of Max with Conor McGregor, and your photographs. It's all the, when I look at photographers, all the top photographers. If you didn't put a name near it, or if I didn't look at him, yeah, Instagram, you know it. You go, that's yeah. Ginger Beard. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'm trying to find, I'm trying to like define and develop my, my, my style and try and like you know mature. But I see, I see, like same thing. I can see Connor's. I'm like, that's kind of clinches. Yeah. Someone like Evan Doherty's. I'm like, that's Evan's. Alex yeah. Hutch, Christian Tierney's. Like, I can see them miles off. And I that that is the end goal. I want someone to look at my picture and go, that's Dave's. Before yeah. they, yeah. Before, like, even if it's not of Connor, I want someone to see it and go, that's Dave's. And I want to have like a good, a good, like mature style. I looked at one, a King Cowley that you had up. He's like in a blue hoodie. Even if it wasn't on Instagram, yeah. I'd know you took it. Yeah. I seen another one. At, Roddy in the August McGregor stuff over in Portugal. Yeah, yeah. And even if it wasn't, if I didn't see, it wasn't on your Instagram. I think Roddy had it up. You just like, now yeah. it's your shot. Yeah, you know thanks. I mean? Well, that's that's the end goal is for people to know. And people mm. see him on billboards and fucking. That's what I'm after. Ad campaigns, big big stuff. That's what I want. Nah, that's it, man. That's it. And you just do only work for Connor, or do you do other stuff? No, I do. Side? I do. I do loads of stuff. So I work with people like Migos, Post Malone. 
I didn't work for Drake. I took pictures of Drake, which is a big difference. But I like you. You seen the August McGregor stuff. Yeah. I I do all the proper twelve stuff. So yeah, I do. I do. I do loads of stuff. I do everything. I anything I can manage to get to get time to do. But obviously, I work. I work for Connor and Claymore Productions. So that yeah. that like his stuff comes first and takes up a lot of time. But when I can squeeze stuff in, like I did stuff with a um, Mango and Mathman. They've got a lot of new new music and stuff coming out, so I did 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 kind of like a brochures and and kind of stuff for them. I don't know, it might be used for their their album covers. I'm not sure what they're mm-hmm. using it for, but I did I did stuff oh, with them. So I loved I loved I just love taking pictures and whenever I can, I would take even long after if, if at some point I have to get a real job or or anything, I'll I'll always be taking pictures because I just I just enjoy. It. I think that's one big thing about it. Like you have to. I love taking photographs, even if, even if it's not like even if I don't post them on Instagram. I love taking pictures. Yeah, yeah. Take pictures of my girlfriend, my dog, everything. Like I just wherever I go, I, I just love taking pictures. Whopper, whopper, Dave. Thanks so much no again. Worries, it was John. great talking to you. Um, some solid advice there for any younger people or older people listening to this. You know, you have to make a few quid and pursue happiness. You can't just do one or the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bit of passion, yeah. bit of happiness, but you need readies as well. Yeah. You know, um. Give Dave a follow on Instagram. He's a fucking. Is have a look at his photographs. They're okay. savage, savage stuff. And um, please, this will be on YouTube on Friday, Saturday. Like, subscribe, give it a share. And um, Dave's Matt gives a follow. Yeah. Be our fifth follower. Oh, That's be- serious. Yeah. That's gangster. <laughs> Rebecca, follow four Rebecca people. Allman, she'll be my girlfriend. <laughs> will definitely be watching as well. You so say definitely getting. If Anderson, you're definitely getting two views. Mary Fogarty and Rebecca Allman. They're 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 two. They're locked in. Whopper. Two number one fans. Whopper. Whopper. That's <laughs> deadly. So thank you very much and um, take a handy. Yep. Nice one. Nice one, Dave. Nice one, John. Didn't swear that got the last.